Hi everyone, in this video we're going to explain how to create a dynamic column changing function. We will use lists, we will use records, uh, function invoke and we will explain each syntax. So this will be a pretty educational video. Now the issue that my client had was that he was exporting files from its system and on each export we had a randomly added spaces before the column names. So all the other structures were intact and were correct but for some unknown reason the program exported column names with a random number of spaces before the actual name of the column. And since we were doing the we were we were going to do the export for every single day and that export will continue to go uh, indefinitely we had an issue because we couldn't assume which column we will be exported with how many extra spaces so we had to find a way to cleverly clean the column names so no matter which column name we receive we will clean it from extra spaces, we will clean it from extra non-printable characters and we even decided to uppercase every single column. So for that reason we developed this function and we will explain everything with this video, the whole procedure of creating it. So first let's go to uh, get this uh, table inside of our query. Uh, we will explain it on the extract from Contoso database with where I intentionally added some extra spaces uh, before the column names. So let's f the first step is to get this data in the Power Query. So we will select the table and we'll choose from table range and this, is, this will load the Power Query editor and First, let's uh, call this uh, raw input. Raw in input. We need to somehow get column names changed. So first, let's try to do it manually to see what is the code behind it. So if we go to manufacturer it has some extra spaces and we remove it product name also and let's see another one I think promotion name also yeah so if we do it manually we will receive an additional step called renamed columns and this is a function invoke so this is a table renamed columns function which is accepting two arguments the first argument is the previous step the table as it was in the previous step of iteration and this is the syntax we are interested in. So if we copy this syntax and we paste it as a blank expression, so let's go to blank query equals and we paste it as a blank expression, we will receive a list of nested lists and each of these nested lists is actually holding the old or the dirty column name and the new replaced cleaned one. So in order to get this function to create a dynamic type of changing column names, we need to somehow introduce a dynamic list of lists expression. So we need to create this expression dynamically. And that is what we are going to do in the following part of the video. So we know that each of these lists is holding the previous and the new column name. So we need to get, first step, we need to get the column names. The easiest way to get the column name from the table is to demote headers or use headers as first row option. And then, always remove this change type. And then we so we know that we need to access the first row of the table so we can use the record invoke syntax and to create a record from a table we need to use curly brackets option and we need to enter the row 
index. Remember, in Power Query, index starts from zero. So if we want to access the first row in this table, we need to add a zero as an index. After we confirm, we will receive a record type object, as we can see here in the, this icon. And it is holding the first row in the table. So the first row of the demoted table. Next thing we need to do, we need to convert it into a table. And now let's duplicate this column. So this is the column holding the nasty, dirty data. And this is the column in which we will do all those uh, cleaning and transforming the data, uh, the column names to a proper form. So let's go right click, transform, clean, right click, transform. Oh, no, that not length, but uh, transform trim. And let's do transform uppercase. And just so that you know what we are trying to achieve, let's rename this column to old name and this one to a new name. New, oh, come on, new name. So we have two columns, ignore this one. And in the left part, in the left column, we have the old dirty name and on the right part, we have nicely clean name. But at the moment, as we can see, these are not lists. These are only values inside of a table but we need to get them in the shape of a nested list. So how to do that? The easiest way is to go to add column, add a custom column. Let's call this uh, nested lists. And now we need to push the old name and the new name columns into a syntax that is going to form a list out of them. So if we add these curly brackets and the column name of the old and the new column, and we close it again with the curly bracket, we will receive a list object. So for every row, we will receive a list object that is holding, if we observe down below, that is holding the uh, dirty and the cleaned type of column name. If we observe the formula bar, we can see the each keyword and each keyword is the key to creating such nested list. Table at column is a iterative function that is accepting three, uh, three arguments. The first argument is the name of the table or the table as it was in the previous iteration. Then the nested list is the name of the current uh, column or the additional column, added column. And each syntax, this each keyword means that the same thing, the same calculation or the same transformation will occur for every row in this table. So for each row in this table, we will create a list as introduced with this curly bracket syntax that will accept the old name, so that will uh, push the old name of the current row iteration and the new name of the current row iteration into the nested list. So far so good, so we created a li nested lists, but we still need to create a list out of those nested lists. And the easiest way to do that is by accessing a column that is holding that list and transforming that column to a list. How to do that? We simply write in square brackets the name of the column that we wish to drill into. So we enter the name of the column in square brackets and we will drill into that column which is holding the list. And now we receive the lists of lists, an object, which is list, and it's holding a nested list. Just to give you an idea of uh, how to access records and lists from a table, I will just do a small digression. So let's load this table. It has only yeah, three columns. It's pretty simple. 
from table range. And if we want to, let's add another step. So if we want to access a row from this table, we need to use uh, uh, curly bracket syntax. So curly brackets, if we want to access the first row, we need to add index zero. And that will create a record type object with, with the first row of the table. In case we want to access a list, uh, in, in case we want to access only a single column and create a list of that column, then we need to use the square bracket syntax and we need to write the name of the column. So writing the name of the column will get, get us to, to, that, uh, to the values of that column transformed into a list. And how to access only a single value from the list, so for instance, if we want to access this number eight, we would need to call both syntaxes simultaneously. So we will need to add uh, index number one and we will drill into number eight. The same thing, the same concept is applied when you do right click and drill down to that particular value. Also, if we observe on the top, we can choose to change the order of record and list invoke. It does not matter. So both are acceptable. So now after we explained it in simpler terms, how to access uh, rows and columns from a table, let's head back to our, uh, let's, head, let's head back to our uh, script. So far we created an expression the second expression of the table rename columns function. So now let's just, we need to bring back the raw table. So let's go again, let's put it back inside of Power Query. Okay, and now let's change this raw input into fx clean. So this will be our function later on. We have the most important part. So we have the part that will change the column names, but we still need to invoke that uh, part. So we need to invoke that expression over the table that, will going, that is going to enter our function. So we need to change, so we need to change this query into a function. This query, is going to accept only a single table input and that will be a dirty dirty table input and we need we want it to be a, a type of table and we want the result of this function to also return table and now this is the syntax to create a function the easiest way to preserve oh i see i've made some mistake here. So these two steps should nef definitely not enter our function because they are hard-coded column names. You should always remove any hard-coded column names in your function because they are uh, most of the time they are the issue, they are the ones that will break your query. So anytime you have hard-coded names like change column time step or rename columns, uh, those steps you want to somehow surpass or not to not include in your uh, query script or function if they are not uh, strictly needed. Okay, uh, we need to, since we removed those two steps, we need to make slight adjustments to the code, so code. And the easiest way, let's get back to our function, the easiest way to preserve this uh, query syntax is to link it to a variable. And let's call this variable a list of lists. And let's say that this variable or this applied step is holding all this logic. Now, since this will be an inner variable or the, or the variable of the inner environment, we need to add another let to introduce the outer environment. And the outer environment will hold uh, this step and will also hold additional step that will be uh, cleaned 
column column names and uh, this step will be an easy one we will call a table dot rename columns I hate when, the, when this happens and the first argument which is the dirty table will be the input table of the function so this is the first argument and the second argument will be a list of lists so here we will provide a list of all the dirty names and all the clean names that we previously created dynamically and of course we need to exit our outer variable uh, outer environment so we need another in and this will also be the exit step of of the outer environment as we can see we use oh there's one more thing that we need to do this dirty table has to be also the input table of the inner environment it is possible so this is the outer environment variable and it is possible to call the outer environment variable from within the inner environment but the opposite does not apply so you can't call for instance when you are in the outer variable clean column names is, is an outer let variable and you can't call an inner applied step so for example trim text you can't call it from within the outer environment so only the outer to inner applies the inner to outer does not okay let's click on done and we should receive our dirty table function and if we were to invoke this function over our dirty table we should receive our freshly cleaned table with all the column names properly formatted now in case you wish to further adjust the query or the function to for instance accept uh, additional transformations of the new column names or you wish to filter out to only uh, to only change certain column names you can do all of that uh, in this step this step so after after the uppercase text here you can add additional logic in case you wish to filter columns or you wish to do some other transformations of the new column name you should always leave the old column names as they were because uh, in case there will be mismatch you will receive an error and with this function you can clean pretty much any uh, column name structure to the one that you wish and you can do it dynamically so every table that goes inside as an input table for this function will get transformed and all the steps will be applied so every dirty table will get a new formatted nicely looking column names so i hope you find this video entertaining and insightful if you have any questions please post it down below and if you like this video please uh, hit like and subscribe button and we will see you in the next video bye